Friday, February 4th, and the time for your body this day morning is a beat. President Dame Sandra Mason will this morning deliver her first speech to Parliament since Barbados became a republic in November last year. The ceremony of the start of the new session of the legislature will take place at the Lloyd Erskine Sandiford Centre starting at 10 a.m. with members of Parliament from both the upper and lower houses in attendance. Dame Sandra's address will outline government's policies and programs to guide its second consecutive term in office. An expert in constitutional law says the Barbados Constitution does not bar Parliament from getting on with the business of the state, even with the appointment of three more senators still outstanding. The position of prominent attorney Gregory Nichols comes ahead of today's opening of the House of Assembly and on the heels of comments made by Queen's Counsel Garth Patterson on the matter. Nichols disagrees with suggestions by his colleague that Parliament is not constituted until all 21 senators are in place and this could delay the operation of both houses of the legislature. I vehemently disagree with my learning friend's um, conclusion that Parliament is not constituted unless the Senate is comprised of 21 members. Section 35 of the Constitution of Barbados establishes Parliament as constituted by the President, the Senate, and the House of Assembly. So that Section 35 of the Constitution is what establishes Parliament as the institution that we are speaking about. Section 36 speaks to the composition of the Senate. So the Senate is comprised or composes 21 senators, 12 appointed by the Governor General, sorry, the President, on the advice of the Prime Minister, two on the advice of the leading opposition, and seven in the discretion of the President. Section 36, which speaks to the composition of the Senate, is not the section which establishes the Senate. So that the Senate establishment is in a different section. What, what Mr. Patterson appears to be doing is to conflate Section 35 and Section 36 to give the impression that it cannot be established unless it, unless it is fully composed. And that is not how you read the Constitution. Nichols also cited another section of the Constitution which outlines that each House may act notwithstanding any vacancy in its membership. Section 50, brackets 2, we call it 52, requires, or should they provide, that a vacancy does not prevent the House of the Senate from acting. So that if the independent, so sorry, the opposition senators have not been appointed by the president, or if all 12 senators have not been appointed on the advice of the prime minister, then that does not prevent the Senate from acting because Section 52 says each House may act not the standard a vacancy in its in, in, in its membership. There's nothing that requires the, 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 the full composition of Parliament to be present on its first sitting in order for Parliament to be thereafter constituted. That is rubbish. The Ministry of Health has hired additional staff to fast track the discharge of just over 3,000 persons from home isolation who have recovered from COVID-19. Several persons seeking to return to work have been complaining about the long wait to receive their discharge documents from the home isolation team. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George said that he is aware of the situation and assured that the matter is being treated as priority. We have hired four to five extra staff and we are looking for um, at the automotive approach, we are doing some automation, but it needs to be fully um, information technology embraced so that we can get persons out of quarantine and isolation. What I would say is that um, persons who are asymptomatic, currently the, um, what we, we ask is that they remain in quarantine for 10 days, and then afterwards they can contact um, either the polyclinics or the op center with respect to how they are discharged from um, isolation. So um, fortunately, in this environment, um, many persons haven't had to be hospitalized. We believe that the course of illness is not as severe as the Delta, 
and um, I think we will get through this before. As I have been telling the population all the time, this is our third wave and we have gotten through each wave and I expect that we will get through this wave also. So since Philip District Hospital has received a much needed donation of beds and other equipment through the efforts of businessman Paul Doyle and Betty Hope Gittins. Doyle, owner of Crane Resorts and Hope Gittins, a former beauty queen in Barbados who now resides in Canada, worked together in sourcing and donating 20 beds, 20 tablets, 20 chairs, 20 mattresses, 20 walkers and 20 wheelchairs to the hospital. Hope Gittins said the idea to donate the items stemmed from a visit to the hospital back in 2019. Today, here at the St. Philip District Hospital, we are catching a glimpse of the beauty of setting ourselves aside to attend to the needs of others. This is how these got here. The people that were responsible for this didn't think about themselves. They thought about the needs of other people. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, I am Onika. I am a mother, I'm a daughter, and I'm a wine educator. When vaccines first came on the scene last year, I was really apprehensive about getting vaccinated. I was worried about taking a drug that I felt was experimental. So at first, I really wasn't about it. I decided to get vaccinated. I had to acknowledge the fact that I am asthmatic and my son is also asthmatic. I have a career in wine. We depend on our senses and I decided that I did not want to risk it for being afraid of taking a vaccine. Coronavirus has affected everyone around the globe. And keeping this in mind, make sure that your decision is not a selfish one and that you're thinking of the benefits of the whole. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. To regional news now, Antigua and Barbuda's Prime Minister Gaston Brown on a Thursday presented a $1.64 billion EC dollar budget that includes no new taxes. He told the Parliament his administration expects the move will contribute to economic growth of at least 8%. There will be no new taxes in this budget. You know, in our position, we promised low taxes and high investments, and we have delivered. And that policy has not changed and will not change. Unless we forget, those who are now pledging to remove taxes, they are the ones who laced us with taxes over the 10-year period. We recognize that after those two years of economic difficulty caused by the pandemic, persons and companies, they need an ease to recover, to rebuild, to reinvigorate. We could never contemplate taxing them. If all the normal, normal circumstances were not increasing taxes, then there would be no consideration during this time of crisis. And finally, Canada's Prime Minister says sending the military to clear protests from the nation's capital is not on the cards right now. In recent days, thousands have been in the city protesting vaccine mandates. But Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says his government had received no formal request for military assistance. There were questions uh, a couple of years ago around uh, military uh, when it came to other protests that were blocking critical infrastructures. Uh, my answer then uh, can, can, is consistent with my answer now uh, that uh, one has to be very, very cautious before uh, deploying uh, military in uh, in situations uh, engaging uh, Canadians. Uh, it is not something uh, that anyone should enter in lightly. Uh, uh, lightly. Uh, but uh, as of now, there have been no uh, requests, and, uh, and that is not uh, in the cards right now. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.